For over 50 years, Kef has been producing some of the world's finest loudspeakers. The world has changed over these five decades, but Kef's approach remains consistent. I'm sitting in the museum amongst historic Kef products. It's a great representation of principle which Raymond Cook dreamt up. Before 1958, we all listened to music on one loudspeaker. 58 saw the first commercial release of stereo. One speaker would be as close technically to the other coming off the production line. And that was very important because 1958 fundamentally changed the way that we were being asked to listen to music. A loudspeaker is at the end of the chain and all this great stuff which is going in the chain before it, we have to be able to reproduce all those nuances. The technology has generally come a long way in five decades, we all know that, but that founding principle is still alive today. Every single KEF product is acoustically designed here, reference series and blade and muon are made here in a really interesting uh, bespoke boutique factory. We uh, sell production here and each pair of cabinets is individually built by our own skilled technicians. Each component is tested and pair matched before assembly. After each cabinet is assembled, then they're transferred up to the acoustic testing center where they're tested against the line standard. When I speak, all frequencies come from one point. I don't have two mouths, one, one little mouth for treble and one big mouth for bass. It'd kind of be weird. UniQ was first in the C35, which was launched in 1988. Uh, the idea of UniQ is to try and make two drivers look and behave like they're just one driver covering the whole band you know, from mid-range right up to the top end. So when you have a distinct tweeter and a separate mid-range, the problem is that when you get to the point where you have to hand over from the mid-range to the tweeter, the directivity suddenly changes. And you also have the problem that the source of the sound suddenly shifts from the mid-range to the tweeter. With the UniQ, you don't have those problems. First of all, by putting the tweeter in the center of the mid-range, the mid-range controls the directivity. And we carefully design the drivers so the directivity matches up. And secondly, they're physically in the same point in space. With a separated tweeter and woofer, at crossover, you've got two sources of radiation. And sound waves can add up constructively, but they can also add up destructively and interfere with each other. So with a normal speaker, you get a vertical directivity which becomes very irregular at crossover. And you don't have that problem with a UniQ. Secondly, it's just a much more natural thing for the whole audio spectrum to come from a single point. Over the 20 years that we've been refining the technology, we've been figuring out exactly how we have to design the tweeter and how we have to design the woofer so that the two drivers work together in harmony. And at this stage, we're really uh, at a point where we've eliminated most of the disadvantages of UniQ and those benefits of having the single source position and the consistent dispersion, they really come to the fore and they're very obvious in the performance. Our drivers all have a tangerine waveguide on them. That's something which we developed to improve the dispersion at the very top end. You'll also see that we've paid a lot of attention to the surround on the mid-range because if you take a conventional half roll surround, you get a lot of scattering of the tweeter. And we've developed a technology called Z-Flex, which you'll see throughout. One of the important things about designing a UniQ is uh, to consider the shape of the mid-range cone. Uh, because unlike a normal mid-range, this affects the tweeter a lot. Now, we have quite an optimized structure. We very carefully match the shape of the, the tweeter dome to the shape of the small horn around the tweeter. And then if you, if you look carefully, you'll see that the mid-range cone follows that completely smoothly without any interruption. What we're trying to do is create a situation where the wave coming from the tweeter just smoothly flows down the, the waveguide of the mid-range. If you take a look at the R-series, the reference and the blade uh, Uniqs, if you look at them from the front, they're the same cone size. And that's intentional because we've optimized the size of that cone to work with the tweeter to give the best possible directivity match. But it means from the outside of the product, you can't really see the differences in the design. It's only when you look at the back and you look at the motor system that you see you know, what makes a blade driver better. So with the R-Series, we have a relatively simple ferrite magnet system. But then stepping up to the reference, we use a neodymium more powerful lower distortion motor. And then onto 
blade, we have again a more powerful neodymium magnet, but this time with a much bigger three inch voice coil. So one of the reasons that we've been able to make big steps forwards in the performance of the UniQ is because of our use of computer modeling. We can do uh, abstract experiments on the computer that would be very difficult to do in real life. And it also allows us to try out a lot of different geometries. We're at the point now where our software is powerful enough that we can do several virtual prototypes before we build the first one. These days, we expect the first prototype we build to perform exactly like the computer model. But since I've been here, the commitment and passion for the speakers being built is second to none. The guys are here because they like what they build and they care what they do. When somebody buys a Kef loudspeaker, they're buying 50 years of heritage, 50 years of experience, extreme passion and attention to detail in premium acoustic products.